So in Philadelphia, as three helicopters from the three medical schools rushed to pick up accident victims on the highway, as three cardiac transplant centers struggled to make their volume numbers, as three National Cancer Institute research centers, two of which are four blocks apart, continue to spend billions a year on research, we're still ranked dead last in our state from a population health perspective. How are we going to reconcile this moving forward? That's our challenge. To me, that's what health reform is really all about. And that's your mission moving forward. It's an incredibly tough job. So we're going to need some big data crunching, hence a brand new journal. Did you know there's a journal called Big Data? It's amazing. I didn't make this up. Brand new. We're going to need that amazing centralized human resource center that you have. I was mesmerized by that video. You're going to have to crunch your own numbers. Why? Because your own employees are a population. So maybe one of the first places for Mike and the team to start is, hey, how fat are you? Who smokes among you? Who exercises here? I was in the exercise room this morning at 6 o'clock. It wasn't too crowded. <laughs> I saw a couple of people sweating, but not nearly as many as are here right now. Let me show you what I mean by that. So population health at the sort of visceral, local level. And for Rod, I want him to be thinking about a Providence Accountable Care Organization while we answer this public question. OK, here we go. So I want you to raise your hands and help me out. Annals of Internal Medicine 2006, University of Michigan Social Science Research Center. What percentage of adult Americans in March 2013 do all five of these things? You got to do all five. Well, number five will say, are close to <laughs> an appropriate body mass index. We'll give you partial credit. So how many, what percentage of grown-ups in our great country do all five of these things regularly? Raise your hand. Help me out. 5%, I got a 5%, I got a 5%. <laughs> Anybody else? 10, 10, 10, 10, we got a 10, we got a 10, we got a 5, we got a 5, we got a 10. This is like medical, you know, very unexplained variation. Here we go. One more guess, anybody? Zero. One. Skeptic, skeptic, skeptic. OK. <laughs> so of course, the answer is 3%. So Rod, you want these people in your accountable care organization. Do you want these people in your local community? Here's American culture. I want my Lipitor on the way to McDonald's. <laughs> Part two, you pay for the Lipitor, I'll pay for the Big Mac, preferably when it's on sale. That's our culture. So population health has got to deal with all these messy issues, this 3%. Listen, even in the 21st century, we know that the key determinants of health are smoking, unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, and of course, the centuries-old scourge of alcohol abuse. This is where it's at from a population health perspective. It's not the new Da Vinci robot. Oh, ho, them's fighting words. It's not the new 30 new ICU beds. It's all about these four key behavior changes that we have to implement, for which most physicians, including yours truly, and John and Rod, I would submit, had no formal medical school or residency-based training in any way to attack these problems, unless you went and got a special degree at a school of population health. So this is a big challenge for us. You all know from a public policy perspective, again, the policies and interventions. Our country devotes a modest amount of resources to studying the impact of chronic illness, as you can tell from this. And again, despite scores of billions of dollars, almost over 40 years, the number one way we reduced cancer mortality was by a national attack on cigarette smoking. 